In this tutorial, we will explore Blender's edit mode. In doing so, we will learn some of the essential edit functions and the basic tools behind editing a 3D mesh. When we open Blender, the viewport defaults to object mode. This is what we use for things like moving, adding, and deleting whole objects. In order to alter the shape of the object, we need to switch into edit mode. You can either click the modes tab and select edit mode, or for the shortcut, tap the tab key. Edit mode allows for the manipulation of 3D objects. What an object looks like is determined by its mesh data. So to edit an object, we need to edit its mesh. A mesh is a shape that is made up of vertices, edges, and faces. These single points are vertices. These lines joining the vertices are edges. And these flat surfaces enclosed by edges are faces. We manipulate the vertices, edges, and faces to create custom meshes or 3D objects. Before you add the mesh, make sure you switch back into object mode. If you were to add the mesh while in edit mode, the two objects would become linked. Blender has various base meshes to begin working from. If possible, it's best to select a shape that looks most similar to the object you wish to model. For example, a cylinder and a cone could be the beginnings of a rocket, a pencil, or a castle tower. Once you have the objects added into the scene, switch back into edit mode. The selection modes are located beside the viewport modes. The default mode is vertex select, meaning we can select the vertex points by left clicking. You can select multiple vertices by holding shift and clicking. Notice the selections are highlighted in orange. To select an edge, both of its vertices must be selected, and to select a face, all of the surrounding edges and vertices need to be selected. The box selection tool can be useful when selecting multiple features. Just left click and drag the box over what you would like to select. There is also the option to change the selection mode to edge select or face select. The shortcuts between these three modes are 1, 2, and 3 on the number pad. 1 for vertex select, 2 for edge select, and 3 for face select. If you need to select a feature on the opposite side of the mesh, you may want to turn on X-ray view. You can find it beside the render modes or use Alt-Z for the shortcut. This turns the faces of our mesh semi-transparent while making it easier to see what we are selecting. Once you have selected a vertex, edge, or a face, you can manipulate them using the movement tools or the shortcuts we discussed in the last tutorial. Here is a demonstration of moving, rotating, and scaling the different mesh components. If you want to delete a mesh component, first select it and tap the X key or delete. Then select the feature you wish to delete. To fill part of the mesh, first select all of the vertices and edges surrounding the hole. Then click Face and navigate to Fill. 
or you could use the shortcut by tapping the F key. To subdivide, highlight each face you wish to divide. Right click on the object and select Subdivide. The Extrude tool duplicates a vertex, edge, or face while keeping the new geometry attached to the original. Select the feature you would like to extrude. In this case, I want to extrude a face, so I'm going to change my selection mode to Face Select and then select the face. Click the Extrude icon located on the left side of the window. A yellow handle appears perpendicular to my selection. Click and drag this handle to extrude. For the shortcut, tap the E key, drag your cursor, and click to place. You can now move, rotate, and scale the face using the Move tools. To add inset faces, you can cancel while mid-extrusion by right-clicking. The extruded geometry disappears, but the face actually remains and is currently highlighted. Just scale the highlighted section up or down for the new face to appear. Then you can extrude. The bevel tool allows you to create smooth or rounded geometry. Select the edge you would like to bevel. Note that in switching to Edge Select Mode. Next, click the bevel icon on the left side of the window. Notice a yellow handle appears. Click and drag the handle to adjust the bevel. For the shortcut, Tap Control B. Drag the cursor and left click to secure the bevel. Note the operator panel that appears at the bottom left. This window allows for further modification of the bevel. Once any adjustments are made, left click to secure these changes. A loop cut subdivides faces by inserting a new loop of edges. Click the loop cut icon and hover your cursor over the mesh. A yellow line appears at the midpoint of the face. This line indicates where a cut can be made. If you're happy with the placement, left click to select the cut line. If you want to position the cut line at a different location on the face, Click and drag the cursor and release the cut at the desired location. For the shortcut, tap Ctrl R. Click to place the cut, move your cursor to relocate it, and left click to secure it. When a new cut is made, an operator panel appears at the bottom left. You can open this window to further modify the cut. Once all adjustments are made, left-click to secure these changes. The knife is another subdivide tool. It allows for more freedom when drawing cut lines. Select the knife icon on the left side of the window, or tap K for the shortcut. Notice the cursor turns into a knife. Click and drag over the object to create a new cut line. Note the two red dots that mark the beginning and end of the cut. These will become the vertices. Tap the spacebar to activate the cut. And if you need to deselect it, just right click.
In the next tutorial, we will learn about Blender's modifiers and their applications.